factoring out a greatest common factor. We discussed the distributive property and how we can use the reverse distributive property to help us factor. And factoring is so that we can write an expression as a product of some factors. And for a polynomial, the greatest common factor is the largest polynomial that will evenly divide into that polynomial. And evenly divide means that we aren't left with any fractions. Everything divides out to whole numbers. To be in factored form, we have to have a product of factors. So factoring gives you another way to write an expression equivalent to the original problem, and it allows us to simplify rationals and solve quadratic equations by factoring in the future. And it helps us to fit, find the zeros of an equation where the x-intercepts are, and there's, there are a lot of uses for factoring that we will need soon. So identify the greatest common factor of a polynomial will be our first step, and then we'll divide that greatest common factor out of every term in the polynomial, and then we will check our answer using the distributive property. So let's take a look at it at an example. When I look at this, I want to find the greatest common factor, so I'm looking at just the numbers first, and I have an 8 and a 4, and I know they're both divisible by 4. So my greatest common factor has a 4 on it and maybe some variables too. So let's look at those. So we have an x squared and an x. And remember, for a greatest common factor, we're going to have to be able to divide by it and come up with no fractions at the end. So we take the smallest exponent for any of the variables and the variable has to appear on every term. So we look here, we have x squared, here we have x, so we can only put x on here for our greatest common factor. Same thing with the y's, they're just in the opposite order. I have a y here and a y squared here, so I have to go with the y for my greatest common factor. So I found my greatest common factor. Now I'm either thinking about it as 4xy times what is going to give me that first term, and times what is going to give me the second term. So 4xy times what will give me 8x squared y. And I can start with the numbers. 4 times 2 will give me 8, so I know a 2 goes here. And then x times what will give me x squared. Well, I need another x. And then y, wait, here, y times what will give me this y over here. And I've just got a y, so it would be a 1, so I really don't have anything to, to think about there. And times 1 won't change my value at all. The second term, this one here, I'm looking for what do I multiply positive 4xy by to get a, this negative 4xy squared. Well, I already know I need a negative there, and 4 times 1 is going to give me that 4, so I only need a 1 here, and then this 4, then I can look at the x. x times 1 is going to give me the x here. And then the y. y times what will give me y squared? Well, I need another y. So I kind of wrote those out, all the little pieces, but really what it should be is 4xy times 2x minus y. That would be the factored form of 8x squared y minus 4xy squared. Now the other way, divide the greatest common factor out of each term would look like this. So I'd have 8x squared y divided by the greatest common factor of 4xy minus 4xy squared over 4xy, the greatest common factor. And then I want to um, reduce each one. So the 4 goes into the 8 two times x goes into x squared x times, and the y's reduce completely to 1. And then I have minus in between. I don't want to lose that. The 4's reduce completely to 1 over here. The x's, same thing, to 1. And the y's, I have a y left on top. And so when I rewrite that, I have 2x minus y. But that's just the part that goes inside the parentheses. The greatest common factor that I divided out has to go at the start. And you can see I ended up with the same expression, both methods. 
check your answer using the distributive property. Let's try that because we want to make sure that we know how to check ourselves so if we're stuck we can see if we're right or not. So I have 4xy times 2x minus y and I'm going to take that whole 4xy and distribute it inside the parentheses. So it's going to be 4xy times 2x and then minus, for that minus in between, 4xy times y. And then when I write that out, I'm going to have 4xy times 2x. So the 4 and the 2 can multiply, and I get 8. And the two x's can multiply, and that'll be x squared, and then just a y on the end. And the second term, I have 4. There's nothing to multiply the 4 with. The x, same thing, but the y's can multiply, so I'll have 4xy squared. Now this, what I come up with from multiplying should equal what I started with, 8x squared y, 8x squared y, minus, minus, 4xy squared, 4xy squared. So those do match, and so that tells me the factored form that I came up with is equivalent to what I started with. Okay. When the lead coefficient, that means the term with the highest degree, is negative, we prefer that you factor out a negative 1. And on this one, you could have factored out a negative 1, but our lead coefficient, I guess you would call it this one with the higher, higher power for the x, it had a positive exponent, so we didn't need to factor it out. This one, the lead coefficient is really this 33x cubed y, and it's positive, so we don't need to factor out a negative one here either. But we do want to find a greatest common factor. So I'm looking at every term. I see the 6 is 2 times 3. 3 is just 3 and 1. And then 33 is 3 times 11. So to form the greatest common factor, it has to show up. Whatever factors I put into the greatest common factor have to show up on every factor list for it to be a greatest common factor. And I only see one where that's the case, one number. And that number is a 3 that shows up on every list of factors. That means that the first term's divisible by 3, and you'll get a whole number. The second term's divisible by 3, and you'll get a whole number. And the third term is divisible by 3, and you'll get a whole number. So 3. And then let's look. Can I divide anything else for my variables? It looks like I have an x on every term. I have to take the lowest exponent this time, because I don't want fractions when I divide by that x. So just an x. And then looking at the y's, same thing. I can just have one single y because there's only a y to the first here and a y to the first here. So now that I have my greatest common factor, remember we have a couple of ways. I can think about it. 3xy times what will give me this first term. And 3 times negative 2 will give me the number part. And then x and y are the same on both, same powers, so I don't need anything else, just a negative 2. And then jump to the next term. I'm going to have a plus in between. 3xy times what will give me 3xy cubed. Well, the 3 times 1 for the 3, and then x times 1, and then y. I'm going to need two more y's multiplied, so y squared is for the second term. And then the third term, 33x cubed y. So 3 times what is 33? And it's a positive 33, so I'll put a positive 11. 3 times positive 11 is 33. And then x cubed y. So I have x. I need three of them, so I need to multiply by two more x's, or x squared. And then y times 1 is y, so I'm done right there. OK, so there's my factored form where I factored out the greatest common factor. Let's look at the dividing out the greatest common factor method. So I have negative 6xy divided by 3xy plus 3xy cubed divided by 3xy plus 33x cubed y divided by 3xy. And get out your colored pens here, and let's do some reducing. 
So 3 goes into negative 6, negative 2 times. X is reduced to 1, Y is reduced to 1. Second fraction, 3 is reduced to 1, X is reduced to 1, and I have 1 Y on the bottom, 3 on the top, so when I reduce I have 2 Y's in the numerator or Y squared because they're all being multiplied. 3 goes into 33 11 times, X goes into X cubed, X squared times, and Y goes into Y one time. Now I can write out my inside part of the parentheses and remember that greatest common factor has to go out front or I'll never get back to what I started with. So the first term is negative 2, that's the only thing showing that hasn't been crossed off. Second term is plus y squared, do you see where the plus comes from? And plus for the third term 11x squared. And we can check and it looks like we got the exact same um, expression or factored form using either method. So let's check it. So I have 3xy times negative 2 plus y squared plus 11x squared. And to check, remember I want to distribute. And so I have 3xy times negative 2 plus 3xy times y squared plus 3xy times 11x squared. And then I will just multiply. I can multiply in any order I want. And so I'm going to choose to multiply the two number parts and get negative 6xy for that first term and then plus. Here I have no other number terms than the 3, so it's just a 3. No other x's, so just an x. And then y times y squared, so I have y times y times y. So I have y cubed plus, and on the last one, 3 times 11, I'll choose to multiply them first. So I have 33. And then x times x squared, so I said it, but now I'll show you for the x's, I set it for the y's, so that's x times x times x, or x cubed. So I have x cubed, and then y times 1, there's no, no other y, so just a y. And so I have negative 6xy, that matches, positive 3xy cubed, that matches, 33x cubed y. And that one matches too, so my answer checks out.